Hi everyone, it's Kim. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Today is the long awaited Instant Pot 101 video. I've been asked several times to film this and I'm sorry for the delay that it's taken me so long to do this. But I had a little extra encouragement during Christmas dinner. Um, the Spear Family dinner was pretty excited about seeing this video coming out. And also my cousin Laura asked me to please get this filmed as quick as possible because she just got one for Christmas. So for those of you who just received their Instant Pots for Christmas, congratulations. I know that you're just as excited as I was. And for those of you who have your Instant Pots but have not used them yet or are not sure what to do with them, let's get started and get those out of the boxes. So my vision on this video is to give you the overview of my Instant Pot. I have the eight quart sitting in front of you, and I'm not sure if you can see, but my six quart is sitting back here on my counter. I'll, um, I'll put a picture in here just so you can see the two side by side. The eight quart is much larger. So we're going to talk about the eight quart. We're going to talk about the buttons. We're going to just basically do an overview of what the pot is and all the functionalities that my current version has. Now, I when I got my Instant Pots, I bought my six quart and then I bought my eight quart just a couple of months later. And they pretty much have the same buttons. Well, not pretty much, but they do have the same buttons. I know that some of the newer pots do have some new features on them. So if my pot does not have the same buttons that you have, please just refer to your user manual for that and you can learn about those buttons as well. Now, I thought that I would just turn this into a video series because of the fact that I thought that that might help everyone to get more familiar with their pots and honestly, I have not even used all the buttons on my pot. So it's gonna help me think outside the box and find some good recipes. So I'm thinking I'm gonna run this maybe six, eight weeks. We'll see if it runs longer. Maybe it'll just turn into a weekly Instant Pot Cook With Me series after that. So we'll see, we'll see how where this goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna change positions. I'm gonna zoom you in on the pot itself just a little bit more so that you can see what's happening. But before I do that, what I thought I would do is I'll just show you the different parts of the pot and then we'll start talking about the functionality. So this is of course the Instant Pot. And hopefully I'm still in the frame. That's the front. This is the back. Now some Instant Pots come with this. Let's see if I can pull it off here. This is the condensation cup and some came with it, some didn't. My six quart came with a con condensation cup. Say that three times really fast. My eight quart did not. So I went ahead and purchased this on my own just directly from InstantPot.com. So I'm gonna put this back on so I don't forget. And what the condensation cup does is it just catches any, I guess, condensation and keeps it from dripping down. Um, I've never had it go any further than, I don't know, maybe here. So it's not like a ton of condensation comes out, but again, I had it on my six quart and I just wanted to be consistent and have it in both. So to pull the lid off, you twist it and turn. You're gonna see this little knob here. I think that I could pop it off on my other wheel. Here we go. This is just the cover that covers the knob. Just it's it's uh just catches things from getting in there. Pops off. Hold that. I gotta do it flat. Hold on. Let me put it back on before I forget. Okay, got it back on. So that's that. Next up, what we have, and I'm pretty sure we can still see this on film, is we have this rubber ring. And this is our sealing ring. So I'm gonna pop this here and I'm just gonna get this started to pull this off because I just had to get underneath the lip. So the sealing ring will come right off. Again, this is so awkward doing it, not facing me. All right, so this is your sealing ring. The sealing ring comes and goes in right on top and behind this lip, this little this steel lip here. So why am I taking that off? Well, 
We're going to get into specifics of that, but I just want to show you that you can remove it. You can throw it in your dishwasher. You can wash it. You can put it back on. So to put it back on, I'm just going to place it here, place it underneath, and we're going to move this out of the way, hopefully. It might be easier for me to show you this way. So you're going to put it underneath here, and you're just going to start to put it and just keep feeding it as you're going around. And it's going to go right underneath this spot. So once I get like halfway through, I just take my thumbs and I just pop it right back into place here. And it will go right back under. You may have to wiggle it a little bit. But then what I do is I take it and I just pull it a little bit. So you can see that it's not pulling, so I've got to just push it down here. Just kind of look at it really quick to make sure. You'll pull it and it'll, it'll move. So I don't know if there's a notch that you can see. Okay, here, see this notch? Watch this notch. See how it moves? That's how I know. I don't know if that's the, the um, official way of doing it, but that's how I know that it's on here and it's on here correctly and I'm good to go. So that's the lid. Two more things on the lid. This knob here will change your pot from venting to sealing. So when you hear me talking about venting the pot or doing a quick release or a natural release, this is what I'm messing with. It's just a little knob here. So two different ways that you can release the pressure on your Instant Pot is you can go ahead and cook your food and then wait. And what's going to happen is there is a little, hopefully I can, do you see this? Hopefully you can see it. This little red knob here, I know this is probably a really weird angle. So this little red knob here will pop up when it's sealed and it falls down when it is ready. The pressure is, the pressure has come down enough for you to open your pot. So that little button there, you can get it to come down really quick by moving your knob to venting right away. So I just take something and I touch it and it moves over to venting and the steam releases. Now, if you don't want to release it quickly and you just want to let it do what's on its own, that's called a natural release. So you just let the pot sit on your counter and eventually the pressure is going to come down because it's no longer cooking and it's no longer in pressure mode. So it's going to come down on its own and then the knob will drop and then you'll know it's safe to open the pot. So that's the lid. This is the unit itself. This is your inner pot. Always, always, always make sure your inner pot is in your heating element before you pour anything into it. What I do is I grab a rag or something. So I'll show you really quick. So I will just grab a towel when I pull this out and I just throw the towel over it because then I know that the pot's not in there. I have not made this mistake yet, but I know that several people have commented on some of the groups that I've been in that they have accidentally poured water in the heating element. And I don't know what the outcome was because I didn't really follow it that close, but I know that if you pour water into that, it can damage your unit. So I always just put something here so that I know that it's not in there. And then after I wash it, I always put it right back in so it's here and I don't have to worry about making that mistake. So that's the pot itself. So before we start getting into the buttons, what I thought I would do is when you get your Instant Pot, they always suggest that you do a water test. And what that means is you put a cup of water into your Instant Pot, you turn it on, you let it build up the pressure, and then once it builds the pressure, it does its thing, which means it just cooks. You just set it for a cook time of like one minute. And then it cooks for one minute, which is technically, technically, just boiling the water. And then you can release the pressure. But what I like about that is when I did my water test with my first Instant Pot, which again was my six quart, it made me feel more comfortable with the pot because it wasn't so overwhelming with Ooh, I'm putting together a recipe. What if it doesn't turn out? Or what if I don't do something right? And then, you know, you get a hundred questions in your head. So 
The water test just gives you a chance to play with your pot before you actually cook something in it. So I'm going to turn around, we're going to put the pot on the counter, and then I'm going to change the angle. I'm going to do the water test with you. We're going to just kind of film the whole thing, and then we'll talk about the buttons themselves while we're doing the water test. So I know it's going to be kind of boring, so as we're talking, there's going to be a couple things that happen, like the button, like this button's going to pop up. So I know that I'm going to have to pause whatever conversation we're in because I can't time it. Like it just does it and it takes a little bit of time to do it. So I can't, I can't time that as far as my narration. So we'll kind of go with the flow. We'll see how it does. And then I'll try to time it as close as I can so that I'm not starting and stopping the conversations that we're in. So enough rambling. I, I know sometimes I just ramble. So let's turn around, get started, and then we'll see what the water test does. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is I just plug the pot in. You can see that it sets off because it's not doing anything. So I'm gonna take a little over a cup of water, gonna pour it into our pot, and then I'm gonna put the lid on. Now, I really like that it kind of sings me a tune because then I know that I have the lid positioned on properly, so you're ready. Did you hear that? Listen. Pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna make sure that my knob is on sealing because I just showed you how to do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to press the manual button and I'm gonna zoom you in now so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Hold on one second, sorry, I know it's a little wobbly. I think that's good. So I'm gonna press this manual button here. And then I'm going to back this down to one minute and I'm gonna let it go. So it's gonna beep in just a second. Any minute. There it goes. So what that does is that lets me know that my Instant Pot has accepted my command and it's going to go ahead and start to build the pressure. So what happens next is when somebody talks about, let's, let's just kind of, let's talk about the Instant Pot itself. When somebody says that the cook time for a recipe is 15 minutes, that is the actual cook time. So the cook time does not begin until the pot has come to pressure. So depending on what you have in your pot and whether or not it's room temperature or if it is really cold or even if it's frozen, it takes a longer time for the unit to heat up. So if you're putting frozen things in there, just know that it's gonna take a little more time for the pot to come to pressure before the actual cook time starts. I think that that's one of the most important things to know when you're starting off with your Instant Pot. So, What's gonna happen is we're gonna wait a few minutes and I'm going to try to catch it when it gets ready to start to come to pressure. And what's gonna happen then is the little knob is going to pop up. And I don't know if I can, let's, let's see before we go. I'm gonna see if I can just be up enough. Okay, I might be able to just do that so that I don't have to jiggle you around so much when it happens. So we're gonna try that and see how that goes, hopefully. But if not, you'll see this many, many times later on in the series as we are starting to cook things. I think that'll be the easiest, easiest way to start to learn the pot. Again, today we're just gonna do the water test so that you can get used to using your pot. So if you haven't already done so, I want you to do this. Now, if you want to watch the whole thing, great. Watch the whole thing, see how it all works out, and at the end of this video, that's your challenge. I want you to do this water test because I want you to have this done before next week because next week I will do something super easy with our Cook With Me. And I'm going to intermingle the Cook With Me's with the buttons on the Instant Pot that you see in front of you. So my goal is by the end of the series 
to be able to use every single button on the Instant Pot to show you how each of them perform and how to work them. So let's talk about the buttons themselves. So the first button we have here is the soup button. Sorry, I'm at a, at a bad angle. Let me see if I can throw some light on there. Maybe that helps a little bit. There we go. So the next button we have here is a meat and stew button. Then we have a bean and chili button and a poultry button. On this side, we have rice, we have multigrain, we have porridge, and we have steam. Okay, so those are our, our functionality buttons. Now, across the bottom here, we have a saute. Yes, in case you didn't know that, you can saute right in this pan. So if you're cooking like a beef stew or something, you can actually brown your meat prior to pressure cooking your stew. So it's really nice that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to use multiple pans and then have so many different things to wash when you're done. The next button's the manual, which you just seen me use. And this is the button I use, I hate to admit it, the majority of the time. We have a timer. I haven't done anything with the timer. And then we have the keep warm cancel and we'll talk about that here in a second. The next button we have is a slow cook. Then we have a pressure. We have adjust, and then we have the yogurt button. So, honestly, to talk about the buttons that I've used, I've used the soup, I've used the bean and chili, I think I use the poultry, again, the manual all the time, and the yogurt button. The rest of them are all going to be new to me, as I'm sure they are going to be new to you as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and zoom you out and kind of bring you up here for a second. Now I want you to watch. Sorry, see it? Did you see the little red button pop up? I'm gonna let that go back and I'm just gonna point it out to you. Right here in front of my finger, see it? Right here. The little button popped up, which means now the pot has come to pressure. So we're gonna watch, and what's gonna happen now is as soon as it reaches the temperature, the internal temperature that it needs, you're gonna see the Instant Pot change to one minute. So the one will pop up, and then what'll happen is it will go ahead and pressure cook for one minute. Now, there we go, there's our one. So it's gonna go for exactly one minute, and I didn't wanna cut any of this out. I figured that way it was easier for me to be able to talk about the buttons themselves and the pot as it was doing this, so that you could not only see how to do it, but also I could explain the, the functions and explain what the, the display was doing. Got a little hissing in the background. That does happen from time to time. That is totally fine. And I always seem to see this happen with the water test for some reason. Most of the time when I'm cooking in my Instant Pot, I never see this little tiny bit of steam happen. So again, perfectly fine. Happens from time to time. Happens with both my 6-quart and my 8-quart. And maybe I can... Oh, there we go, done, one minute done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to back you up. And I think that, I mean, do oh, you see the little cancel button here? You can see that now it's switched to keep warm. And what's gonna happen here is this L button and this timer, what this is gonna do, this is gonna start counting up, meaning that your food has cooked and it's gonna tell you how long it's been on the keep warm cycle. So if we just waited just another second or two, it should flip to one minute and then you'll know that we've been waiting one minute since the cook time stopped. And I'm hoping that happens soon because I'd really like to show you how we do the quick release on the pot itself. So I'm going to start bringing you back. You should still be able to see the timer and then I'm gonna bring you up. There we go, one minute. So it's been doing its thing for one minute and I'm gonna pop up here because I want you to see what happens when I flip the lever. Now I'm gonna use a knife to flip the lever because the pot is at such a weird angle right now. 
I don't want to kind of try to reach around. I mean, the pot itself is not hot. See, I can touch the pot. Um, not hot. The lid, a little bit hot. So don't touch the lid, but the pot itself is not hot. So I'm just going to grab a knife, and I'm just going to turn the vent to, I'm sorry, turn the knob to venting. And you can see that the steam, hopefully you can see the steam really can hear it. If I turn the light off, it'll be easier. Can you see it better? Probably not. All right, hopefully you were able to see that a little bit as it was happening. And if you can see our little red button, I'm going to zoom back in. What's going to happen is our little red button, as soon as the pressure's released and it's safe to open, your little red button's going to fall back down. You can almost hear it like any second. Boom. Done. So what's, what's happening now is your pot is now safe to open. And that is a safety feature that the pot comes with that it will not actually, the, the lid locks until that little button falls down. Now depending on the model that you have, the button sometimes pops up and sometimes it just goes flat on the surface. And I'll try to remember to show you that. I'll alternate the pots that I cook with just so I can show you the differences of the eight versus the six. And show you how the knobs are different or the buttons are different and hopefully that'll all make sense later. So anyway, let's open the pot, ready? And done. Hopefully you can see all that steam popping out. And all I've done was boiled water. Now, if we had actual food in here, it would have cooked a lot longer. I pop my little lids like bouncing around over there. So it would have cooked a lot longer, but for now, we are just doing the water test. Now, one of the things that I did not mention about the pot itself, which I really want to cover really quick before we wrap up this video, is each of those buttons that I showed you earlier, the soup, the meat, the poultry, the rice, each of those are pre-programmed at the proper pressure level and the proper time for the items that you're putting in it. So if you're cooking rice, it's going to be at the proper time for the rice. I don't know if I can do anything with so each of these um, buttons have their own associated cook times with them. And some of them are 30, some of them are 15, some of them, I mean, just they, they vary based on the type of food that corresponds with the button. So as we start going through this, we'll talk about the times themselves. Now with my pot, I could go through and show you the times that are associated, but the problem is, is that with my pot, if I've touched the buttons or I've touched the cook times on any of the buttons, it will retain those cook times. Um, I'm not sure if all the models do that, but I know that this model for sure does that because if you notice when I hit the manual button before, it said five minutes when I hit it. If I hit it now, it should say one if my memory serves me correctly, and it does. So. One minute is because I did the water test, and if I do something different with it next time, it will actually just hold that cook time. So I like that feature because of the fact that when I do my beans, I don't use the cook time suggested. I change that, and you'll see that in upcoming videos as I do our cook with me's. All right, so I didn't mean for this to be so long, but I wanted you to see the pot, see the parts of the pot, and talk about the functionality along with doing the water test today. So now, this is your challenge, and I know I said this earlier, but I want you to get those pots out of the box and do the water test, because you're going to want to do that so that you get familiar with the pot itself, so that when we get ready to make our videos next week, or you're watching my video next week, you are ready to follow along with me and see how awesome and amazing this appliance really is. All right, with that said, I'm going to sign off from here. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, and all that other good stuff on this video. And with that said, we'll see you next time. Bye.